Chapter 301, Army of Undead Bretel City had undergone a slight change. The civilians that dressed like beggars within the city often saw a different scene from what they usually saw. The soldiers of Bretel City that lived like cowardly borers had recently become energized. It was like they had been possessed by something. They would actually form a tidy troop and run while carrying weights or practice their swordsmanship within the city lord's mansion that was undergoing steady repair. The originally cowardly and useless soldiers who'd worn fearful expressions on their faces gradually toughened up beneath the harsh training from the knights in silver armor. Their previously wax-colored thin looks also hardened and had unknowingly become more defined. It wasn't just the soldiers in Bratel City but some other areas also underwent significant changes. An example would include the pitted city wall that was now repaired by some old and retired soldiers. The changes were especially apparent at the city lord's mansion. It had suddenly become filled with life. The large numbers of people visiting and leaving it had even caused it to become a bit disorderly. For the civilians of Bretel City who'd already given up hope they weren't too affected by these changes. They were used to the city lord being the first to escape and didn't think that these changes would have any effect. Instead some of them even maliciously speculated about the harm these actions might bring to them. They didn't know if the changes in the city would cause the bandits and soldiers of the seven duchies who hadn't visited in several months to think that there was loot worth pillaging in the city once again. It would be another terrible experience if they became interested and came back to rob the city once again. Han Sha Oh slowly walked out of the secret chamber within the city lord's mansion very early in the morning to find Falk and Dick Chester already waiting in the living room. When he saw the three of them the three people saw Han Sha Oh move his storage ring dumping weapons as well of bags full of provisions onto the floor. Han Sha Oh looked towards Falk and said use these weapons and chariots properly. You also have to control the provisions properly. Furthermore start recruiting today. Civilians can enter the troops as long as they are young and strong. For now promise them one gold coin aside from their meals. As an earth knight sent over by Lawrence Falk naturally possessed uncommon strength. Several soldiers had already died from the intense training under Falk. However, the death of these soldiers had actually served as examples causing all of the soldiers to truly realize the harshness of their training meaning that none of them dared to be there just to make up the numbers. Falk would maniacally train these soldiers in the morning and then discuss military tactics with the high-ranking soldiers at night in the city lord's mansion. Han Sha Oh also felt that he learned a lot after listening in on the side for a few days and felt that Falk was indeed an officer that he could place his trust in. Understood Falk wasn't a man of many words. He normally had on a stern face and exuded the righteousness and bloodlust of a soldier. Dick have there been any unusual events in the surroundings recently? Han Sha Oh smiled at Dick who was in charge of the dark mental operations in the area Sir Count apart from some of the civilians not understanding your actions nothing special has occurred recently around Bretel City. However, According to Dark Mantle reports I believe a wave of bandits will pay a visit in a few days. Of course their targets should only be the mountain people in Mount Tail I near Bretel City Dick replied respectfully. Although the soldiers in Bretel City were cowardly and useless the local Dark Mantle branch still operated normally with Dark Star spies concealed in the surrounding mountains. Han Sha Oh nodded and then said with interest very good. Keep your eye on this figure out when the bandits will strike along with their numbers and path. Falk perhaps it's time we test these soldiers. If we don't stir them up a bit I think it would be hard for them to truly grow. My lord you are very right about this. I will make them look more lively Falk replied. Three days later a battle that often occurred happened intensely yet again on Mount Tail I the mountain southwest of Bretel City. Redby would throw to let 4,000 savage bandits and rushed up Mount Tail I disregarding his losses. On the other side the mountain people hid in large bushes and behind large boulders beside the meandering paths of the mountain using bows to stop the bandits from climbing the mountain. The mountain people had already become used to these sort of attacks. They naturally had their own way of handling it. Large rolling boulders and arrows caused quite a bit of damage to the bandit horde. The mountain people that hid behind the boulders on the mountain were much braver than the soldiers within Bratel City. They were not afraid of the bandits attack at all using a variety of tactics to harass and repel the invaders. 
fuck do you think those bandits can emerge victorious? Han Shao a bit of distance away from the bandits turned his head towards Fok at the foot of the mountain. Fok shook his head and answered bluntly it's impossible although Red Retrota's bandits number plenty the mountain people of Mount Tail I have the geographical advantage. Furthermore they are already used to the mountain battles. It's impossible for war horses to walk the meandering mountain paths yet Trota does not have the determination to fight to the death so he's destined to not gain any loot from these attacks. Only a hundred something bandits are dead from 4,000 savage bandits. He he Falk do you think that we have a chance of doing them in? Han Shao asked once again. That's also impossible. The road at the foot of Mount Talai is flat so we have no geographical advantage to make use of. What's more these soldiers haven't been trained for that long I don't think that their courage can immediately face the savagery of the red beard bandits. What's more we merely have a thousand three hundred people. Sire this is not a good idea Falk was shocked after hearing Han Shao's words causing him to immediately advise otherwise to Han Shao. Sadly Han Shao didn't listen to Falk's suggestion. He chuckled and said Falk you forget that I'm a necromancer. Necromancers specialize in this sort of large-scale battles. What's more these bandits don't have any outstanding light arch mages. I think we can give it a try. Before Falk could speak again Han Shao had already walked towards the red beard bandits with a smile while saying attack with me. I think you should know what to do. Han Shao took at the skeletal wand from his spatial ring. With a low chant dark beings began to appear one by one. Due to the existence of the skeletal wand the power of the summoning magic was doubled. 50 warriors 200 something zombies 700 something skeletal warriors and 300 gargoyles led by 10 evil knights were summoned by Han Shao as he used the skeletal wand and poured in a huge amount of mental power. A thousand 200 something dark beings including powerful evil knights and hatred warriors along with soaring gargoyles stood in an organized fashion and marched towards the bandits under the direction of Han Shao's skeletal wand. After seeing so many dark creatures appear with Han Shao's chant Falk felt his life suddenly turn bits surreal. Only when Han Shao's figure had nearly disappeared from sight did he finally react and quickly roar towards the soldiers behind him those ones that were terrified of him today is the day to test your training. You have already seen the city lord's prowess. I don't doubt that he has the strength to kill all of you just by himself. The results of being a coward will definitely be quite pitiful that's why your only choice is to listen to my orders and attack. The soldiers who were already frightened felt a chill grip their hearts after hearing Fox roar. They glanced at Han Shao waving the skeletal wand with a sinister expression. As courage and cowardliness warred against each other all of them surprisingly found the courage to fight. They grasped their weapons with a determined gaze and made the preparation to die in an effort to avoid falling at the city lord's hands. The little skeleton with glittering white bones rode a special undead creature full of spikes that was 5 meters long and 3 meters tall. This creature seemed to be a hedgehog that had been magnified a thousand times. It carried a tail full of spikes and had only a single gray eye that was suffused with the aura of death. The earth elite zombie and the wood elite zombie each rode on a fire-breathing black heart armored war horse. These were usually only owned by an evil knight. They stayed at the little skeleton's sides. These three little things were actually more cocky than the ten evil knights and showed up at the very front of the troops. What was weird was that the ten evil knights wasn't dissatisfied by this apparent desertion of the pecking order and followed docilely behind them. What what was that? A cowardly bandit at the rear screamed shrilly after turning around to see what the dull roar behind him was. He was completely flabbergasted at the sight that greeted him, focused on the battle in front of him Redby Retroda was annoyed and had a sullen expression on his face as he roared on top of a boulder. When he heard the clamor from his subordinates he immediately cursed stupid pig's charge. Boss behind. Look behind. The bandit was terrified as he anxiously pointed behind him and continued to shriek. When Troda raised his head he was met with a dark aura of death. He found that a horde of undead creatures emanating an icy air not of this world was marching inexorably towards them. Chapter 302, Charge Why Are There Dark Creatures Here? Redby Retroda was shocked. 
he couldn't help but stop barking orders to his subordinates to charge up Mount Taili as he gazed baffled at the dense army of undead creatures that were advancing on him. Boss I think I think that the target of those damn dark creatures is us. When the shimmering purple eye of the little skeleton focused into a glare at the cowardly bandit the bandit suddenly felt that the warm spring air had plummeted into the depths of midwinter. A bone deep chill crept into his body. Light mages kill those filthy dark creatures. Troda noticed the disadvantages situation by now as well so he hurriedly roared at the mages ahead on Mount Tali. There weren't as many mages as there were swordsmen and knights in the profound continent. The fact that this bandit group could field a few mages was a clear demonstration of their strength. The journeyman mage as well as the light adept mage clearly realized that it would be up to them handle these dark creatures so the two of them had already started their incantations the moment Troda finished speaking. Rays of light shaped swords and balls of light shimmered in the air as they slowly barreled towards the undead creatures, seeing the light magic descend the earth elite zombie who had been standing on the front line scratched his head ingenuously and suddenly sank into the earth from the body of the fire-breathing warhorse. Right after that a barrier formed from dust suddenly appeared blocking most of the light swords and balls of light. Although several light swords and balls of light managed to land on the dark creatures and purify a few skeletal warriors they barely made a dent in the horde of dark creatures. These two light mages were not light archmages like Ferguson who was able to cast a damaging area of effect spell such as Radiant Glory. Mere sparkles of light were snuffed out like candles in the wake of the inexorable advance of more than a thousand undead creatures especially since the undead army also boasted the little skeleton and elite zombie warriors who were not afraid of light magic in their ranks. Of course the black armor of the high ranked evil knights also gave them very good resistance to light magic. Thus, the army composed of dark creatures did not waver at all under the attacks from light swords and balls of light. They continued to rush vigorously towards the bandits led by Redby Retroda. Foolish pigs feeding you guys was truly useless. Troda swore loudly and pulled out a bright dual-edged broadsword from his storage ring. He then roared towards the subordinate behind him come smash these dirty bones. Troda immediately charged out in the lead 3,000 bandits by his side. The bandits who didn't understand things like battle formations at all only followed behind Troda like a crowd and charged towards the dark creatures with savage expressions. Falk led the group of terrified soldiers in another direction different from the dark creatures path. The soldiers from Bretel City looked fearfully at their city lord not daring to retreat in the face of Han Shao's ruthlessness. Prepare the crossbows and bows shoot until you see them fall. You gutless idiots focus. Falk couldn't help but swear when he saw the soldiers actually daring to crane their necks around on the battlefield. The soldiers Soldiers who were used to being scolded all raised the bows and crossbows in their hands and shot wildly at the red beard bandits running down the hill. Although these soldiers were far from accurate the bandits were too densely packed together. Every arrow drew blood in the crowd as long as enough strength had been applied behind the shot. On one side stood soldiers that hadn't been trained for long and had worked up their courage for the first time to resist the bandits. On the other side were fiery bandits who didn't understand battle techniques and used brute force. As defenders the bows and crossbows in the soldiers' hands were quite vicious. 300-something bandits were killed and 5 to 600 others were injured in the blink of an eye as a dense rain of arrows hurtled down. After the bandits had paid the price in 300 lives they finally reached the foot of the mountain. They had two options now. They could either charge towards the Bretel city soldiers on their flank or charge forward to meet the slowly advancing undead army. Troda was furious. He'd finally recognized the ones who dared to attack him were the cowardly soldiers of Bretel City. The same soldiers who would run away like cowardly dogs every single battle and were a laughing stock for the seven dukedoms and the bandits. Yet at this moment these soldiers had actually dared to pick up their weapons and attack his men inflicting quite a bit of damage. This was an unforgivable insult for Redby Retroda. Thus, Troda roared maniacally when he'd reached the foot of the mountain's brothers destroy these pieces of crap. Troda once again lead the charge as he rushed the soldiers led by Falk with a roar. He didn't bother attacking the undead creatures in front as per his previous plan. However, 
even though he didn't attack the undead creatures these creatures of darkness controlled by Han Shao and the little skeleton would not let them go peacefully. When the dark green from the canopy of necromancy crept over the ruby hue of dusk a dense aura of death slowly spread out under the cover of the canopy. All of the bones of the undead creatures shimmered with evil light as they bathed in the undead atmosphere. Their slow marching immediately suddenly tripled in speed and even the hate warriors that moved slowly became as fast as flying gargoyles. Oils. With a series of deep and archaic chants rays of rippling gray liquid poured down from the sky. As the gray liquid poured down patches of acidic swamps with azure smoke appeared in the middle of the path that bandits were taking towards Falk and the soldiers. The bandits that carelessly set foot in the acidic swamps all suddenly howled in pain. Due the corrosion of the acidic swamp their skin and muscles quickly separated from their bones. Fifty to sixty living skeletons suddenly appeared in the acidic swamps in the blink of an eye. Damage avoid those pools emitting azure smoke, Troda yelled then furiously glared at Han Shao who was elegantly releasing necromantic spells. Troda roared, evil necromancer why are you opposing us? I shouldn't have wronged you before. Han Shao temporarily stopped chanting and looked at Troda with interest. He said softly with a charming smile Bretel City is my territory wouldn't killing and robbing in my territory count as offending me? Ha ha so you are that unlucky new city lord. Do you think that Bretel City is Seamus City? Do you think that your necromancer can change the situation of such an abandoned place? Troda mocked Han Shao after the latter revealed his identity. How would I know if I don't try? Han Shao chuckled lightly in response. He then pointed the skeleton staff towards Troda's direction and ordered children tear them apart. The purple eye of the little skeleton riding on top of a giant undead creature shone with a ferocious light. He looked towards the undead creatures that were rushing towards Troda and suddenly patted the undead creature underneath him. This undead creature that looked like a supersized hedgehog extended three pairs of five meter long wings that seemed to be made of azure color rotted meat. With a flap of its azure wings the giant undead creature brought the little skeleton into the sky towards Troda. This seemed to the signal for a charge. The moment the little skeleton and the undead creature took off the gargoyles that had been circling above quickly flapped their bat-like wings and followed closely behind the enormous undead creature and attacked Red B. Retroda's bandits. Han Shao floated in the air and observed the spiky undead creature through a Yin demon. He didn't know why but the dense white bones sticking out of its body actually seemed rather familiar. After a period of detailed observation through the Yin demon Han Shao suddenly remembered that the little skeleton and earth elite zombie had collected a lot of super ranked magical beasts bone spikes. Those bone spikes had shimmered with a strange energy that was actually surprisingly similar to the energy coursing through the spikes on the undead creature. Can it be that this undead creature that I've never been seen before was actually refined by the little skeleton? This thought randomly popped up in Han Shao's mind but he quickly dismissed it as too fanciful. A little skeleton that he'd personally refined shouldn't have this kind of special ability. Don't kill him I want that leader alive. Han Shao suddenly yelled when he saw the little skeleton and the undead creature dive down at Droda. Han Shao had found out from Dick that the bandit named Droden often robbed Bretel City in recent years. He was a bandit leader who'd amassed an unknown amount of wealth. Han Shao was going to make him spit out all of the riches that his group had looted. Bretel City currently needed a large amount of gold coins and the 200,000 gold coins Han Shao had brought with him was not enough to continue supporting everything. Chapter 303 must confess even unto death the undead creature that had been rushing at Troda suddenly changed direction to attack the bandits in Troda's group in accordance with Han Shao's shout and the little skeleton follow-up pat. Troda roared as he shot out a series of arrows at the undead creature. A random few connected but unfortunately didn't hinder it at all. This hedgehog-shaped undead creature ran right into the middle of the dense group of bandits under the little skeleton's guidance. PFFT PFFT. The enormous body of this undead creature barged into the center of the bandits. Its sharp spikes pierced through five bandits three of which were torn apart while two of them flew through the air impaled on the spikes. Three hundred gargoyles roared as they flew over flapping their bat-like wings as they shot forward. Roughly a dozen bandits didn't even have time to resist before iron hook-like claws mangled their flesh and blood. The dark creatures that couldn't fly united with the ten evil knights charging down Troda's bandits under the leadership of the earth and would elite zombie. 
over a thousand undead creatures of various kinds crashed directly into the middle of the bandits. These creatures didn't fear death or felt any pain. They used either sharp weapons or claws to crazily assault the bandits. The skeletal warriors were the weakest among the troop. Their bones often shattered upon impact of a strong collision except for those whose bodies were at a higher level of defense. The power from the iron bars in their hands was very ferocious able to create great trouble for the bandits. The huge hate warriors were even more difficult to deal with. It would take four or five bandits to barely handle one hate warrior. Only fire and lightning magic in addition to light magic could deal major damage to these powerful undead creatures. Even though normal physical attacks could cut off the hate warriors limbs they still couldn't stop the latter from attacking. The ten evil knights were the fiercest as together they raised huge sharp white bone spikes with great lethality. A swing of a huge bone spike would sweep five or six bandits to death. The black armor formed from the exotic or native to the abyss of death was even more resistant to magic compared to normal armor while the undead creatures themselves weren't easily injured by physical attacks. Therefore the ten evil knights were a nightmare for the bandits. The bandits seemed unable to find a suitable timely method to deal with them. Han Sha O oh stood in the air activating the bone staff and chanting some obscure magic incantation. Under the thick veil of the canopy of necromancy's green black fog water ripples descended from the sky to create puddles of acid bog. The acid bog was harmless towards the undead creatures. But when living people were that the, the aura of death around them entered they would be dissolved to the bone. Damn stupid pigs you do you only know to stand there and watch? Fog let out a loud curse. He clutched his silver spear and turned to the bandits shouting aim at them. The brutal bandit group of 4,000 members really couldn't be underestimated. Han Sha O oh had only summoned over a thousand undead creatures the majority of which were the lowest level of zombie warriors. The power of these zombie warriors was too weak to pose a true threat to the bandits. Therefore the amount of undead creatures were too few compared to the bandits. It was simply impossible to exterminate a large amount of these 4,000 bandits by relying on on few hate warriors and evil knights. Amidst fox screams and shouts series of arrows landed amongst the bandits and even the undead creatures. The arrows were basically harmless to the high-level hate warriors and evil knights so most of these arrow attacks didn't even cause any damage to them. Seeing the hate warriors have no problem attacking the bandits even when stuck with arrows the greenhorn archers heaved a visible sigh of relief and unleashed their skills even more fiercely. Now that they had nothing to worry about the archers became better at deploying the shooting skills learned from their training. The attacks were becoming increasingly accurate. More and more bandits were hit and died from the arrow. Arrows. Observing the situation with cold eyes Han Sha O oh was startled and suddenly paused the acid bog magic. A narrow twisting path that led to Fox Group had appeared next to Troda. The narrow path was enough for only three or four people to enter but it gave rise to an opportunity to attack Fox Group. Attack. Kill those damn cowardly soldiers of Bretel City. Troda pointed towards Focky. The layers banded around him rushed straight at Fock with Troda beneath the rain of arrows. The soldiers were becoming used to the fight. They mercilessly shot even more arrows at Troda's group as they faced the latter's incoming attack. The charging bandits fell one by one and rolled onto the ground like porcupines with arrows, spears and lances extending out of their bodies their dying poses varied and exotic. Halfway up Mount Taila the leader of the mountain people tall Falcon with a high nose bridge was wearing not quite precious armor and at a loss as he watched the chaotic battle at the mountain foot saying what's going on? Falcon was the leader of the mountain people on Mount Tali. They lived on Mount Tali by mining to trade for living necessities. The group of roughly a thousand mountain people had dropped continuously to less than 600 throughout endless conflicts. They would have already long been destroyed by the bandits if it hadn't been for the terrain of Mount Tali. I don't know who that necromancer is but those soldiers should belong to Bretel City. And those Bretel bugs actually dare to wield weapons in their hands I must be seeing things. Veteran miner Turioff was tiptoeing on a tall stone speaking with suspicion as he looked down below. I heard that Bretel City got a new city lord. Could it be this is the new city lord really wants to change the whole city? Falcon exclaimed involuntarily a hint of shock appearing in his eyes. It's said that the new city lord is Brian. He seems to be an necromancer who killed the great sword master of the brute merchant alliance. He's an evil man who's challenged many powerhouses of the empire. No one could escape his palm of his hands. He's never spared a single life.
life in any fight. Turioff had recently heard some information from Brett L. City thanks to the Fairweather merchants. He couldn't help but speak up now. Folk and the chief of the mountain people on Mount Tail I pondered silently for a bit before opening his mouth to say that damnable bandit Troda has killed many of our people. Even my little brother died to his hands. Whatever it might be Troda's situation doesn't look very good now. It seems we won't have to stay and defend ourselves on the mountain anymore. Falcon do you mean to descend down the mountain and fight to the death with Troda? Toria fast startled. Nodding his head Falcon harumphed coldly and shouted loudly perhaps today is the time for our revenge. These damnable Troda bandits have killed too many of our people. We must not let him leave Mount Tali alive. As his words sounded Falcon stepped out from a mountain rock and sprinted downwards at the battle at the mountain foot. The mountain people who'd been hiding behind rocks and shrubs all followed Falcon to charge the area where Fox Group was stationed all of their long accumulated hatred abruptly exploding. For the Falcon's people the undead creatures were strange existences from another world. It was best not to come in contact with them. These creatures didn't belong to this world after all so it'd be a shame if the creatures turned to attack them. Moreover there were acid puddles of various sizes on the ground beneath those undead creatures. There were dozens of stark white skeletons freshly denuded of their flesh that were still lying in the acid puddles. The creepy scene was too shocking for them. They naturally wouldn't be willing to enter such a dangerous place. Whoosh whoosh. Two bone spears shot out from an unknown position. Droda suddenly felt pain on his two legs. Dozens of gargoyles abruptly swamped over him. Without waiting for him to react they grabbed him with their claws spiraling up with him into the sky. My name is Brian I'm the new city lord of Bretel City. Very pleased to meet you Troda. Han Shao's voice rang out elegantly. When Troda finally reacted he saw Han Shao's smiling face looking down at him while the claws from four gargoyles pierced through his back. These four creatures flapped their wings not letting him fall to his death. What do you want? Troda was indeed a leader in the bandit world. His face was still vicious and furious as he roared at Han Shao despite the agony on his bloody back. I don't want anything only all of your wealth. Spit back everything you've pillaged from Bretel City in the past several years. Han Shao was in a good mood as he spoke with a soft happy laugh. Kill me. I won't give you anything even if I die. Ha ha you won't get your hands on this weth. Troda let out a crazy laugh seemingly not knowing how to spell the word death. PFFT. Three bone spears nail Troda's chest and lower abdomen. Han Shao said smilingly you seem to have forgotten that I'm a necromancer. In addition to the power ability to control dark creatures necromancers are very familiar with the soul. Even if you die I can still extract everything from your soul. Chapter 304 Memory search the boss the boss is dead. A bandit screamed when he saw the three bone spears penetrate through Troda. When they saw Troda killed in addition from the undead creatures and Bretel soldiers the bandits lost their fighting spirit. They were no longer fearless of death and instead suddenly felt an ardent desire to live. No one thought of getting revenge for Troda they all fled in panic. Using the bone staff to cast a necromancy magic spell that wrapped around the hazy green of the souls Han Shao solemnly chanted obscure incantations to collect the memories of these souls. He flourished the bone staff a while later. The souls turned into green smoke and drifted away. The gargoyles dragged Troda's body over to Han Shao. He relieved Troda's corpse of his space ring before promptly throwing the corpse away. Han Shao let out a light breath of satisfaction after collecting Troda's wealth in memory. He looked to the distance to see that the chaotic battle still going on. A portion of the heavily injured Redbeard bandits rushed towards Fall. The soldiers who'd been shooting arrows from a safe distance were shocked and frightened as they switched gingerly from bows to board swords and spears under Falk orders. Falk arranged for the hundred plus experienced knights to be out in front and started attacking the incoming bandits along with the soldiers. Falcon and the mountain people of Mount Tali had also sprinted down from the mountain. They cooperated with Bretel soldiers to surround and exterminate the red beard bandits who'd were all dejected due to the death of their leader. Han Shao firmly grasped the situation through the three yin demons. He knew for sure that the bandits were doomed for defeat this time. The undead creatures were still slaughtering the bandits as per his orders. Having reached the separate demon realm Han Shao no longer needed the power from these souls. However, 
the demon slayer edge on his chest still silently absorbed this energy that was difficult to observe by the naked eyes. Standing on a high altitude Han Shao discovered the little skeleton riding a huge bizarre roaring porcupine and running all the escaped bandits down. The earth elite zombie with elite zombie and ten evil knights were fighting together as they scurried around hunting down bandits. Han Shao issued an order and the little skeleton and zombie warriors in this area squatted down to collect the spoils of war from the bandits' bodies. The undead creatures diligently searched out every weapon leather jacket and even some fine clothes before piling them up according to Han Shao's instructions. Han Shao stopped supplying mental strength for the canopy of necromancy after the bandits had fled letting it gradually scatter to the wind. The earth gradually absorbed the acid bog puddles under the sunlight. The skeletons in various weird postures suddenly let out cracking sounds and collapsed. There were no surprises now that the big picture had been set in stone. In this battle more than 2700 out of 4000 bandits had died the rest had fled in a bedraggled fashion. All spoils of war had been collected from the corpses which Han Shao ultimately handed over to Fox Management. Nearly 200 of Bretel City's new soldiers died from the bandits' savage attacks in this battle while Falcon had only lost only 50 of his people who rushed down from the mountain. This showed the weak power and incompetent abilities of the soldiers in the battlefield. Noble Sir Count thank you for your help. When the battle was settled Falcon went over to Han Shao and bowed to pay his respects and gratitude. No need to stand on ceremony. Mount Mount Taylor is part of Brittle City territory. It's my responsibility as the city lord to ensure the safety of your lives. Han Shao responded with a smile before adding I hope this is a good start. Brettel City is also your hometown I don't think you must continue staying on Mount Taylor if you don't want to. Perhaps one day we'll return to Brettel City but it's not yet the best time. Sir Count should understand our concerns. One battle wasn't enough to assure Falcon. He wouldn't dare to take the risk before Brettel City could display powerful military strength. Nodding his head Han Shao said smilingly you will see Brettel city change. Alright we can stop here today. I still have other things to handle. Paying no more attention to Falk and Han Shao went over to Falk and told him to clean up the battlefield. He then left for direction of the Helen Duchy by himself. Han Shao had received the information about Red B. Retroda's hidden location from the latter's mouth. In addition to some miscellaneous crystal cards inside the space ring the jewelry and ores that Troda had pillaged over years hadn't been sold but hidden within a mountain with a bald top instead. Troda had originally been a criminal in the Helen Duchy. He was released thanks to general amnesty when Helentina succeeded the position. Troda left the prison and returned to his long-lost freedom becoming a bandit. Even though he'd been making a mess everywhere over the past several years he was still obsessed with his hometown. He'd hidden the wealth at a mountain not far from his hometown. The current Grand Duke of Helen Duchy was Helentina rumored to be an extremely charming woman. This woman had obtained with finesse the Grand Duke position that her uncles had coveted becoming the true power holder of Helen Duchy. None of the uncles who fought for the throne had escaped from her hands. She'd killed them all when she'd succeeded the seat. Helen Duchy Humph. Han Shao snorted coldly. He traversed the dim sky while secretly thinking about when to make a move on this duchy. Even though Helentina was a woman and the army there had no hearts for mercy in her hands. Her Helen Duchy was the most frequent invader out of the seven Grand Duchies that invaded Brettel City. Helen Duchy was 700 li to the northeast of Brettel City. It'd take a day to travel by a fast galloping horse but Han Shao only needed an hour using the art of the mnemonic Ninth Heavens. Upon his arrival at that bald-headed mountain Han Shao saw a large-scale battle campaign that involved four Grand Duchies in full swing on that precise mountain. The person who Han Shao had been secretly cursing Helentina was valiantly sitting on a fiery red phoenix come and at ease as she commanded the troops in an attack. Chapter 305 Hiding the seven grand duchies included the Helen Duchy of Helentina Bavenden Duchy of Alla Cambridge Bullet Duchy of Bertzili Bonton Duchy of Randy Allard Narson Duchy of Benedict Sackville Edmund Duchy of Argigio and Bisley Duchy of Nahum Beige. The combined size of the seven grand duchies wasn't much smaller than the Lancelot Empire but the seven grand duchies fought all year round and never seemed to stop. This battle was being conducted right outside of the Helen Duchy the current participants being the Helen 
the Norsen the Emmen and the Bonten duchies. Grand Duke Benedict of Norsen duchy was in the prime of his life. He coveted Helen Tina's beauty hence his cooperation with Helen duchy against the invasion of Edmund and Bonten duchies to win the beauty's heart. Benedict desired Helen for her beauty as well as her duchy. However, Helen had always maintained a tepid attitude towards his aggressive pursuit. This tickled his heart making him even more eager to please her. Benedict often accepted Helen's invitation to personally lead the army of Narsen Duchy in skirmishes. Helen wore a bright red magic robe a mysterious magic pattern on her high protruding chest and her long red hair elegantly flying in the wind above the mountain. Helen looked like a dazzling goddess of fire as she rode the red feathered fire phoenix. On the cliff beneath her was Grand Duke Benedict of Narsen duchy in clean exquisite formal attire. He stood next to a luxurious carriage a calm and confident smile on his face. His eyes were watching the soldiers of Edmund and Bond and duchies advance deep into the mountain. Han Shao arrived in the sky above the mountain valley. Glancing down on the raging battle he recalled Troda's wealth being buried hidden here and momentarily zoned out. This place was completely different from the mountain valley with a mithril mine. The mountain was formed purely from the deposits of type of very durable rock. The darling of the earth the earth elite zombie could move unimpeded within the soft soil but he couldn't do so at will with this rock solid mountain. If the metal elite zombie could be refined in the place of extreme metal its ability to destroy stones and drill through mountains would enable it to enter easily. Unfortunately the metal elite zombie was currently unobtainable since the location of the place of extreme metal was still unknown. Han Shao could only helplessly watch the grand battle occur on the mountain while thinking of another other way. Han Shao stood on the sky his vision scanning the entire mountain valley. He frowned wondering if he should make use of this chance to enter. Troda's wealth was hidden at the spot beneath the carriage where Benedict was standing next to. Troda hadn't placed all of his wealth into the space ring likely because he was scared that someone would assassinate him to seize his ring. Troda had also been quite a player. He'd had three lovers and two sons in the Helen duchy. He'd already made the appropriate arrangements for his most trusted mistress. Once she learned of his death the wealth in his mountain would become the pillar of support for this mistress and his sons. Therefore Han Shao needed to quickly clean out the 400,000 gold coins worth of treasures when the news had yet to reach her ears. As Han Shao rapidly watched the scene below and tried to think of a way Helen Tina below suddenly discovered his gaze. She frowned a magic staff embedded with an enormous flame stone abruptly appearing in her hand. This magic staff had the ability to increase the effectiveness of of fire magic. Helen raised it and pointed at Han Shao. A blazing fire coalesced into five human sized fireballs flying straight towards him on the sky. Hateful woman, Han Shao softly cursed. The fingers on his left hand danced adroitly, shooting out rays of faint purple flame. The rays wove into a glacial net tightly enveloping the five huge fireballs. Sizzling sounds and faint smoke instantly appeared when the magic net woven from the purple spell fire of the mystical glacial spell fire wrapped around the five fireballs. The cold air instantly snuffed out the fire elements within the fireballs. The fire remnants shimmered as they slowly scattered down forcing Helen to pull on the hood of her magic robe. Who is it? Helen Tina looked up only to see a small black spot under the sunlight. She withdrew her contemptuous attitude and asked cautiously upon seeing her fireballs easily destroyed. Han Shao paid no heed to Helen Tina and snorted before flying off towards the back of the mountain. He intended to temporarily Temporarily depart this troublesome area and think of other methods later. At the back of the mountain he saw Helen's soldiers hauling enormous war equipment to the top. Han Shao intended to kill a soldier and changed outfits in order to enter the main battlefield. Helen Tina started panicking upon seeing Han Shao fly to the back without any words but a snort. She looked down and shouted to Benedict you take care of matters here. The magic cannons are being delivered to the back of the mountain but a dangerous character has appeared. I need to immediately go and take a look. Helen Tina patted the fire phoenix without waiting for Benedict Sackville to reply. The super rank magic creature has brilliant fiery red feathers that swayed and sashayed as the phoenix flapped its wings and flew up bringing the bright red robed woman to the back like a gout of blazing flame. The magic cannons contained a strange kind of magic element. This element seemed to repulse the space rings. The cannons couldn't be placed directly into space rings and could only be pushed up slowly via human power. Helen Tina had crafted the strategy for this grand battle for a long time the killing blow being precisely the bombardment of magic cannons from the high attitude 
altitude of this mountain. She had been planning this for far too long using enormous effort to lure two grand duchies to the same place. She absolutely would not let anyone destroy her plan. Therefore she expended full force in stopping Han Sha Oh when she saw him fly to the back. Han Sha Oh had yet to apply his plan when a red silhouette quickly flew over. In the sky five huge but slender vivid fire snakes twisted their roughly seven meter long bodies before shooting at Han Sha Oh from five different directions. The fire magic mad dance of fire snakes could only be casted when a fire mage advanced to the rank of archmage. The ring that Helen Tina wore on her left hand enhanced mental strength. Add to that the magic staff embedded with the flame stone she was able to release five fire snakes instead of three that an ordinary archmage could summon. The five fire snakes meandered in the sky the extremely high temperature creating sizzling sounds in the air. The fire was so violent that it seemed that it would only need a short while to burn Han Sha Oh to ashes. Han Sha Oh was stunned. He had originally looked down on Helen Tina thinking she was only a woman with wild ambitions who only knew to use schemes and beauty to gain power. He hadn't expected her to have real strength. This terrifying strength coupled with her extraordinary beauty surprised Han Sha Oh greatly. Snow white bones shot out like flowers in full bloom becoming as soft as silk threads. They were woven into a massive white bone shield under Han Sha Oh's manipulations. Endless darkness blotted out the dazzling sunlight. The dark fog completely shrouded this space while the white bone shield materialized in front of Helen Tina. The fiery red halo of the five fire snakes wasn't enough to light up the surroundings. As the sunlight was blotted out the snakes lost their targets and turned to entangle the white bone shield instead burning it to crisp. Helen Tina suddenly couldn't feel a hint of Han Sha Oh's presence anymore. The dark fog disappeared as quickly as it came dispersing upon just a breeze. When the sunlight returned to scatter upon the hill Han Sha Oh had already vanished from the air without a trace leaving behind only the burned bone shield that was cut off from its supply of magical energy. The shield shattered into small inky black pieces and scattered down. Taking out a pair of snow white gloves with silver embroidery Helen Tina promptly caught a falling piece of bone. She was shocked upon looking at the pitch black piece in her hand her eyes vigilant as she swept a glance around and murmured turns out he's a damnable necromancer. Just who is this person? Mumbling to herself for a bit Helen Tina still had no clues. She naturally thought that Han Sha Oh had taken advantage of the dark fog to escape. Turning to look at the soldiers busily pushing the cannons she ordered hurry up move all of these cannons to the top of the mountain. The bare chested soldiers were hard at work and all shouted yes. Upon hearing the order, everyone snuck a glance at the goddess of their heart and felt themselves full of an inexplicable energy their strength suddenly spiking up. On a huge rock a soldier lightly rested his hands on the carriage containing the cannons. A trace of ridicule flashing in his eyes he glanced at Helen Tina in the sky like a vicious beast lurking in the dark looking at its prey. He whispered with a chuckle Helen Duchy Helen Tina. You pillaged Bretel City to fatten yourselves now it's time for you people to spill some blood.